Hello everyone, today I want to show you how an instrument cluster voltage regulator works. So what we have here, just to demonstrate, is we have the regulator itself, we have the capacitor, aka condenser, that attaches to it, and it's attached in the correct way, and then we also have a gauge for reference. Now, before anything gets confusing, I have exactly five volts going to this setup right now. Now, why do I need, why would I do five volts to it? Obviously a car battery does not put out five volts. Well, the reason why is because when I have it at that, um, and I, I could bypass this regulator right now if I wanted to, but I have five volts hooked up and then my gauge reads exactly like that. Now, uh, again, why do I really care? Well, it's because of uh, this regulator's construction, even though it's called a five volt regulator, it's only a five volt average value. This is a uh, switching regulator, but unlike modern switching regulators, which switch at say 100 kilohertz, this one's more like two hertz. So uh, these gauges, instead of just reading as a straight voltmeter or ammeter, uh, instead use a wound heating coil, which provides a lot of, uh, the technical term is low pass filtering. Um, but in other words, it just smooths out that high and low voltage spike because this gauge um, is, is not never getting exactly five volts. It's only getting an average. And I should mention, so I'm not really sure, normally in a Packard gauge, five volts is too much for it however in this one this gauge seems perfectly happy to rest at about three quarters the way up uh at five volts so i'm not sure if there's something wrong with it or if it's just a different range of gauge or, or what's up with that but it, normally putting five volts to your gauge is not advisable instead you want to run it through some sort of resistor may like a, at least a five ohm resistor or you can take a spare fuel sender and just keep this at all, at the uh, all the way full position and run to your gauge. Uh, that's what you would want to do normally, but I tried that for this gauge and it would just read really low and hooking up five volts exactly makes it read like this. So a bit of an exception there, but once you have your gauge reading a certain way with five volts directly, and again, I don't need to run it through the regulator. I can literally just take my wires here and boop right to the gauge. That's what we got. Now I can turn my voltage up a bit and then we can see the uh, regulator start to work here. So here I am at 10 volts, which is obviously pretty low, but then we can see our needle is more or less stayed in place there. And obviously it's moved up a little bit, but it would be way, way off the scale if it was actually getting 10 volts. We can see our voltmeter here just keeps oscillating back and forth uh, in terms of the amount of current that, uh, the amount of voltage, I mean, that's actually going to the gauge at a given time. Uh, I'll turn up the voltage a bit more. We are now at uh, 14 volts right here. And we can see that our gauge. Now we can see the movement a little bit, but uh, it's still reading right on the dot there. Uh, so all the way from five to 10 to 14 volts, uh, we have a constant average output. Now you can probably see what's going on here because of our, our movement there. Sometimes it does dip a little bit low. How this gauge works is there is a metallic strip on top and just a singular contact below there and how did I say gauge how the uh, voltage regulator works um, you have the bimetallic strip on top which contacts to a, a contact below and this device is wired such that uh, when the circuit is completed then you have battery voltage going through 
the winding there. That winding is about 43 ohms, which for a typical battery voltage means you're going to get about 0.3 amps through there, which is a significant amount. Um, so that's going to heat up pretty quick and obviously heat up the bimetallic strip that it is wrapped around pretty quick. When that happens, it moves up and away from the other contact, that pair of points there. Um, we can actually see that happening. We zoom in a little bit more here. It's easier to see from time to time. There we go. I know I'm moving the camera a little bit here. I think that's clear enough. So we can see that those contacts are gently opening and closing. There is, of course, this adjustment screw here. And what that does is moves the lower contact up or down. So turning this counterclockwise moves that lower contact up, which means that the upper contact has to, you know, that bimetallic strip has to heat up more to get out of the way. Uh, which would increase the duty cycle and hence increase the average output voltage. So that output voltage is, is adjusted uh, at the factory, but because I cleaned up the points on this one to make it work, then I need to recalibrate it, otherwise it might not work. Um, and it can actually be in, you don't know if it's going to work in either direction. So uh, what I would suggest, you can... You can do this theoretically, so if you have any just USB charger and a cable that you don't care about, that'll give you 5 volts to calibrate your gauge. Um, you just strip back the wires on the cable, and that's, you know, just like a charger brick is 5 volts and 1 amp. So that'll give you a regulated 5 volts, and then you can hook this just straight into your car. Please use some circuit that's fused, at least, but the... Um, the concern there is you might, uh, if this thing is really out of calibration, you can burn up one of your gauges doing that. So if you're if you want to do it that way, I would suggest screwing this in quite a bit, and then slowly unscrewing it until your gauge reads correctly. But as you can see here, our gauge is still more or less right on the money. I mean, this stuff is it's analog technology, but both of these things, so it's never going to be exactly perfect. But um, clearly we are getting a 5 volt average output, which we know because that's exactly where our gauge read at a actual constant 5 volt input. So now we know our regulator is working properly and it's good to install back into the vehicle. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. For more like this, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you later.